We're going to start a, uh, a new series tonight, and the title of the new series is The God of Life. And um, the Lord had, us, had me minister something on a Sunday morning uh, a couple months back, and, um, and I feel like we need to camp on this on Wednesday nights. Is that okay? Did the Lord help you in the last series? Did He help you? Helped me. <laughs> I, I really learned some stuff, <laughs> getting high off my own supply, you know, I mean, Lord, I'm getting stuff when I'm preaching, learning as I'm studying, you know, receiving just like you, and uh, he, he's wanting to take us on another journey now, and all these things are building on top of one another, and, and to be honest with you, I don't know all where this is going yet, but the Lord does, and uh, we're going to get introduced into this series to the God of life, say God of life with me. 2 Peter chapter 3, and uh, Father, we do thank you tonight, Lord. We hook faith together for the message and for revelation of your word, and we thank you, Lord, for giving each one of us eyes that see, ears that hear, minds that understand, hearts that receive, and Father, I thank you tonight for the anointing and utterance to minister and to serve and to preach and teach this word just the way you'd have me to, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. 2 Peter chapter 3, and look at verse uh, 18 with me. 2 Peter 3, 18 says, But grow in grace. Can you grow in grace? Yes. You can, can't you? And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can you grow in knowledge? Knowledge of God. Now go with me to John chapter 17. Anybody in the room know all there is to know? <laughs> I didn't even finish the question and you already are saying no. That's good. That's a sign of humility. No. <laughs> no, nobody in the room knows all there is to know about God. Um, nobody in the room is, is, uh, is walking in a place of personal fellowship and intimacy with Him that you can't grow and know more about Him. Um, knowledge of Him. We're not, when we talk about growing in knowledge of God, we're not just talking about knowing more about Him. We're talking about knowing Him more. You ever gotten to know somebody more? Gotten to know them better? Well, see, that's relationship. I mean, you can get on somebody's Wikipedia page. Half of you didn't know what that is. That's on the Internet. You type in Wikipedia. It's like an encyclopedia on, online. You can type something in, and I can read... I can read paragraphs and paragraphs about somebody and know about them that doesn't mean I know them and when we're talking about knowing God we're talking about knowing him for yourself not 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 living vicariously through me and the experiences I have with him or somebody else but knowing him for yourself walking with him for yourself going through his word for yourself and discovering who He is for yourself and spending time with Him. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about growing in knowledge, getting to know Him. Can anybody say, I, I'd like to get to know Him even better? I mean, I don't know about you, but I know Him. I know Him. I've walked with Him for, you know, close to 20 years now. Been in ministry, full-time ministry for 15 years. I know Him. I do. I know Him. But there's a lot about Him I don't know. And there's more that he's wanting to reveal and show to me and you. Would you, would you say amen to that? Amen. Yeah, yeah. And um, John 17 and verse 3. Now we're just introducing this tonight. We'll, we'll, we'll go further as the Lord leads us, but I really just wanted to get this introduced to you tonight. John 17, verse 3. And it says, This is eternal life, that they might... Know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you've sent. Now, listen to the, to the, that's not generally what you and I think about when we think about eternal life. But according to the Master, that was in red, Jesus said it, according to Him, this is eternal life. To know, to know God, let me read you some other uh, translations of that, to know Him I think one translation said to know him intimately. Amplified Bible said this is eternal life. It means to know, to perceive, 
to recognize and to become acquainted with and understand. Who? God. This is eternal life. Um, the ICB said, this is eternal life, that men can know you. Come on, can you know him like you know your spouse or your, or your sister or your brother or your best friend? One of the things that drew me to the Lord, this is one of the first things that drew me to him. I was listening to um, a, a preacher. I was listening to Jesse DePlantis right when the Lord started dealing with me. And he's been famous this week in the news, if you haven't noticed. Um, but uh, anyway, um, I started listening to him. And, and I enjoyed hearing him so talk because he talked about God like somebody that was with him every second of every day, like it was, he was his friend. And my heart leaped up, and I said, I want that. I want to talk to God and walk with God the way he does. And um, I, got, I got tickled one time. This is, year, this is year, years after that, uh, a couple years back recently. Um, uh, he was telling a story. Um, he, had a, he has a teenage daughter. He had a teenage daughter at the time. And... Um, he went into her bedroom because she's getting ready to go somewhere. And he said, Jody, I just want you to know that I know what you're getting ready to do tonight. And he told her exactly what she's getting ready to do. And, and she got mad. She said, Dad, how did you know that? And he said, Jody, God's my friend. And that just put something in me that we can walk in close fellowship with our Father. Just spending time with him all throughout the day, no matter what you're doing. I was with him on the golf course one time, and I was kind of just rejoicing. We had some good services that weekend. This was years ago, and we used to have multiple services on the weekend. And uh, I wasn't even talking about, I was, I was just talking to him, and, and just, you know, talking about the services and kind of just fellowship with him. And he said, on the next hole, make sure you hit a four iron, because there's wind up here you don't feel. <laughs> I thought, Okay. <laughs> Well, you don't argue with your caddy when it's God. You just do what he said. <laughs> now, why does God do stuff like that? He loves us. Oh, God don't care about that. Oh, no, he cares about everything that I'm interested in. And you too, you're, you're his child. But we can walk closely with him. And eternal life, that, that is to know him. And to know him intimately. And to know him uh, more progressively every day. The voice said, all who receive me will experience everlasting life, a new intimate relationship. Say intimate relationship. And Jeremiah 31, we can flip, you don't have to flip over there. Let's put that on the screen. Jeremiah 31, God talked about this. He, he prophesied about it. He's prophesying about the new covenant. And it says there in uh, chapter 31, verse 33, it says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with, my house, with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their inner parts and write in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. This is prophesying about the new covenant. And the verse 34 says, and they shall, let me read this to you out of the Amplified Bible. They will no more teach each man his neighbor and each man his brother saying, know the Lord, for they will all know me. What's he saying? Everybody. This is for every believer. It's not just, you know, in the Old Testament, it's the prophets and the priests. There are certain people that walk closely with the Lord. But in the New Testament, everybody can know Him. Everybody can walk closely with Him. He, you, you should never listen to any preacher and think, well, they can hear from God and walk with God on a level I can't because I'm not a preacher. Wrong. This verse said, they all know me. And, and, and they all... Um, the Amplified Bible, again, in that verse said they'll be acquainted with me and, and um, uh, understand and recognize me and be acquainted with me. This is talking about intimate fellowship. Now, let's go back to uh, Philippians chapter 3. So we're not talking just about knowing about God. There, you know, we're talking about knowing Him. Knowing Him for yourself. Walking with Him, fellowshipping with Him. And that's available to you and me. Um, there are facets of God that you and me know nothing about. <laughs> there are things in God that you and I haven't seen yet, don't know yet. God reveals himself to us 
you could say it like this, line upon line, piece by piece. If he just <laughs> revealed all himself to you at once, you couldn't take it. <laughs> you couldn't handle it. So piece by piece, he, as you walk with him, he reveals himself to you and me. And like you said already, we, we need to be humble. We need to recognize, I, I have, some of you have probably been walking in with the Lord maybe 30, 40 years, but there's still more about him that you haven't tapped yet, things you don't know yet. And uh, we need to be open and we need to be humble so that we can see the things that he's wanting to show us. Philippians chapter 3, uh, the Apostle Paul is talking about this very topic in this chapter. And this is when he said that he gave up everything, or I don't know if sacrifice isn't the right word, but um, that he lost everything for the sake of Jesus and knowing Him. Verse 7 says, But all, what things were, were a gain to me, those things I count now for a loss for Christ. So some things that used to be important to Him, He don't care about anymore. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but a loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. What's He saying? There's nothing more important than this. He said, I, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung. Was he talking about how hard it was to give up all this stuff? No, he said, compared to the knowledge of the Lord, everything else is junk. You got to watch this talking about, well, I had to give up this for the Lord and I have to give up that for the Lord. You're acting like it almost wasn't worth it. <laughs> Nothing's compared. Anything that you need to give up to get closer to him, you ought to think, well, it's junk anyway. <laughs> I want to get close to him. That's what the Apostle Paul's doing. And um, he said that I count them as, as dung, that I may win Christ. Win Christ means to gain favor and fellowship with him. He wanted more fellowship. So there's some stuff that he's not going to do anymore because he wants closer fellowship. Stuff that's not important anymore because he wants closer fellowship. So he wanted that. And then number, uh, number two, it says he, that I may be found in him. I want to be found in Him. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So what's he saying? He's saying, I, I'm giving this stuff up. I'm counting it as a loss because, number one, I want the knowledge of Jesus. Number two, I want to gain favor and fellowship with Him. And number three, I want to be found in Him. And then he lists number four in, in uh, verse 10. He says, that I may know Him. What is he saying? I want to know him more and better than I know him right now. The Amplified Bible is so strong in this verse, and it's such a good translation. It says, for my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may become progressively, more deeply, and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. Is he after something? And what's he saying? He said, I, I want to know him on a higher level, more intimately than I know him right now. And he said, the Amplified Bible is so strong, it says it, it's my determined purpose that I may know him. How about you? Should we have a different determined purpose? Not a different determined purpose than that. We should have the same, right? We're, I didn't say that just right. <laughs> um, our determined purpose should be the same, to know him progressively become more intimately acquainted with Him. A lot of people come to God because they just want Him to fix all their problems. And God's merciful, and that's okay. He, he wants to be your help. But what happens to a lot of people is if He fixed all their problems, they just leave Him. No, I don't, I'm not in really interested in knowing you or serving you or following you. I just want you to fix my problems. <laughs> and then if He did, if He just fixed their problems, they'd say, okay, bye, and just go do what they want. Well, He's desiring more for us than just that. Fellowship. Fellowship. Remember, there's a scripture in Psalm 34 that said, those that seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. <laughs> so what should you be busy doing then? Seeking Him. Amen. Who He is. What do you want from me? What do you want from my life? What do you want me to do? Where should I go? What should, where should I be? And do you think in the middle of seeking Him, He'd teach you how to get any needs met that you needed to have met? Cause any of your dreams to come to pass and things you enjoy in life, he would, wouldn't he? 
What did he say? He said, it's my determined purpose that I may know him. Put Jeremiah 29, uh, 13 on the screen for us, please. It's my determined purpose that I may know him. Let's say that together. It's my determined purpose that I may know him. Progressively, become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. And I like how it keeps going, and understanding the wonders of his person. Now, what's religion tell you? Oh, you can't understand God. Don't even try. Well, where's that verse? <laughs> there's verses that talks about the depths of the Lord. But there's also a verse that says, no man knows a man but the spirit of man. And no man knows the Lord but the spirit of the Lord. And then the verse went on to say, and that spirit lives in you, <laughs> that you may know the things that the Lord has freely given to you. <laughs> God's, not, God, God's, God's wanting to reveal Himself to you and me. But we have a part to play in that, don't we? And here's the part in Jeremiah 29, 13. You seek me and you'll find me when, when, when it's convenient for you and you seek. When you, on Sundays, you come to church and you'll find me. Now He said, when you seek me with all your heart, Come on, how many can say amen? I, that's happened to me in my life. I, I remember in, in, when, when, um, in college when I started uh, developing a, I would call a personal relationship with the Lord. And uh, this was before I, before I was, knew I was even called to preach. God knew, but I didn't know. <laughs> and uh, man, I, I remember seeing things in the Word, and I would just think, Lord, you are so good. This is so good. And then, you know, later on after I knew I was called to preach, you know, you try to sit down and read a chapter, you, but you can't because every word of every verse just jumps out to you. Amen. You think, oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Oh, I've been sitting here for two hours and read three verses. And what, what, what's happening is I'm finding him because I went a-looking. <laughs> And anybody, anybody, this is available to anybody. This is available. And I don't care how much you think you know. Some of us need to stir that back up and go, go a-searching again. <laughs> and go on the hunt again. And we're going to in this series on a, on a specific area. But go a-searching and go, and, and go a-looking. Jesus said, you seek and, and you'll find. And I'm telling you, he, he can become so real to you. You can have moments like that. I pulled into the golf course one day and, and um, had been spending time with him in the morning. Pulled my car in a parking lot when I was working at the golf course. He said, don't park here today. Don't, I park here every day. He said, don't park here today. I didn't park here that day. I backed up, parked my car out, pulled in another parking spot. Six, seven, eight hours later, after my shift was over, I was out playing golf. And I'm sitting on a hole and we're waiting for these guys ahead of us. And I just happened to be gazing over the parking lot, leaning on my club. And I'm watching this guy hit a ball, and he hits a ball, and the ball's flying through the air and hits the car that was parked in the spot I was supposed to park in. I went, <laughs> I wasn't laughing because their car got hit, but I was, Lord, what's happening? Just walking with him. He was laughing, I was laughing. What's he, he's just re making himself real to me. God is real, isn't he? He wants to walk with us. He wants to fellowship with us. He wants to talk to, with us, with every believer. And how do you get that? Man, you go in pursuit of it. You seek Him with all your heart. And, and pursue Him. Let me encourage you to that. Pursue Him on a, way, on a level right now that you're not. If you're not spending any time with Him, start spending some time with Him every day. If you're spending a lot of time with Him, maybe ask Him about something you can do to, to increase that and pursue Him on a, on a greater level. Go with me to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. Yes, He wants you and I to know Him, to walk with Him, fellowship with Him. Walk closely with them and know them intimately. You know, when you know somebody intimately and somebody starts talking about them, saying things that you know aren't true, you, you want to come to their defense, don't you? And you got to watch getting in the flesh about some of this. Particularly when people start talking about God. You know, God hurts you to teach you something. Right? <laughs> stuff like that. You know, God wants some people poor. You know, stuff like that. That's not, that's not him. And all you know is they don't know him. God, we're going to look at some of it in this series. God is all good. Everything about him. And if it's bad, it's not him. 
He's good. Yes. Now, you need to say yes to that before your head understands it. He's good. Now, something bad happened. It wasn't by His hand, That's right. and it wasn't by reason of His neglect. He's good. Say, He's good. We might get into some of that. Now, in Mark chapter 6, why, why is it important how you see God? In Mark chapter 6, this is when Jesus came to his hometown. And uh, what was Jesus doing in every other town he went to? He was having miracles, wasn't he? <laughs> Preaching and teaching and healing. And people were getting, there were some places he went, everybody that touched him got healed. <laughs> and faith was high in those places. And honor and respect for him was high in those places. And every, there's, we won't look at this tonight. We, we might should do this some other time. But if you, if you study the scripture in Acts chapter 10 and you cross-reference it with Luke chapter 4, what you'll find out is that everywhere Jesus went, he started his message with this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and the acceptable year of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Well, he came to his hometown, and you know what he preached? He said, the Spirit of the Lord's upon me. And he preached that. And after he got done preaching, they said, the Spirit of the Lord's upon him. That's the carpenter, isn't it? That's Mary's son. That's James's brother. And Jesus said that there was no honor for him there. Now, now, who is he? He is what he said he was in Luke chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. That's who he is. But when they see him, what do they see? Mary's boy. I changed your diapers growing up. Now you're coming back home and telling us the Spirit of the Lord's upon you? You, you built my, t my kitchen table. What do you mean the Spirit of the Lord's upon And there's no respect. There's no honor. And, and why? Because they're not, they don't know him. They don't see him for who he really is. And then, because they don't see him for really, who he really is, it's affecting what he can be in their life. See, a lot of people don't see God as Savior. They don't even think they need a Savior. Certainly don't see God as Savior. So God can't be Savior to them. Are you following me? There's a lot of people that don't see God as healer. They see Him as Savior, but beyond that, they don't see Him as much. Yeah, He saves us from eternal damnation and going to hell. Amen. And that's all they see. And they don't see Him as healer. So when they get sick, they don't, if you don't see Him as healer, you don't go to Him as healer, and you don't receive healing. How you see Him affects what you believe about Him. It affects your faith. And if your faith is affected, it affects what He can do in your life. And so they, they have a wrong image of him. They're not seeing him for who he is. They don't know him as the Spirit of the Lord's upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel. They don't see him as that. So he comes there and he can't be that to them. And their perception of him is affecting their reality with him. So in his hometown it said he couldn't do any mighty works there. Why? Because their perception of him is affecting their reality with him. So now he's able to do mighty works. He's more than capable. The Spirit of the Lord's upon him, but here he can't be it because they don't see him as that. And they don't believe he, he can do that there. Why? Because you're not that. You're just this. Are you following this? And for, him to, for, for their reality with him to change, their perception of him has to change. And this is a, this is a, this is a popular one in, in the body of Christ. The majority of the body of Christ does not know God as financial provider. And if they do, there's a very small percentage that thinks that He would give you more than enough, or way more than enough. They don't know God as that. And then if people teach or preach that or demonstrate that, they get resistance. They say, oh, no, 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 that's too much. That's too much. That's God, no, that's not the Lord. You can't serve God in money. Yeah, you can't serve God in money, but you can serve God and have money. Abraham did. He had lots of money. You saying Abraham didn't serve God? No, he served God. He's the father of faith. And they don't know it. So they don't, they don't know verses. They don't pay attention to verses like that Isaac sowed in famine and God increased him a hundredfold and he became very rich and very wealthy. They just, they don't do anything with those verses. They don't know about Abraham being very rich in silver and cattle and gold. Talk about, well, that's spiritual blessing. Spiritual cows? 
spiritual cattle. And they, they, the enemy, what the, the enemy's trying to keep them from seeing God, who he, really, who he really is, so that God can't be that in their life. What happens when you put money into the hands of a righteous person? It multiplies righteousness. Money's a multiplier and an amplifier. That's all it is. And money, money doesn't, doesn't make you somebody different. It just shows us who you always really were. So if you got rich and bought a boat and a lake house and didn't come to church, money didn't do that. You were always that way. Just showed us who you really were. That's why you got to be careful about... That's why God has to be especially careful about who He prospers and how He prospers because He runs the risk of running you off. <laughs> He's not going to do that. But He's given us the power to get wealth. <laughs> and Deuteronomy talks about goodly houses and... You know, all kinds of, God, 1 Timothy 6, God richly give you all things to enjoy. And Deuteronomy, you can be plenteous in goods. It's material stuff. God doesn't care. The only thing he cares about is don't love it and don't trust it. You can have as much of it as, <laughs> I mean, you'd be shocked how much God doesn't care how much you have. He just doesn't want it run in your life. And he wants you to be ready to sow everything you have. And there's people that don't have anything that won't sow anything they have. So it's not just having money. Somebody said, the money's the root of all evil. No, the love of money is the root of all evil. And there's people that love money that don't have any. And, and you know, they'll, they'll skip three towns and leave their church for a 10-cent raise on their job and don't even pray and ask the Lord. Well, why did you take that job? Well, because it pays more. Well, who's your, who's your Lord, money or God? Now, I'm not trying to convict anybody, but don't come and try to tell somebody, you know, if you're doing stuff like that, don't try to come and tell somebody that they're not serving God, they're serving money, look like you serve money, right? We should ask the Lord and not make money, decisions based on money. Amen. Make decisions based, how did I get over here? Somebody's needing to hear this. But my point is, the enemy will try to blind people. They don't want, he doesn't want people to see this about God because he knows when money gets into the hands of righteous people, righteousness multiplies. And he knows that if he can... If he can um, steal your prosperity, he can cripple your cause. And all you have is a dream in your heart, but no means to get it to come to pass. And you'd be shocked. This is, and, and, and preachers then, they're scared to talk about money. Because of what it, you might think about me if I talk about money. Well, I got set free from that very early on. Because <laughs> I just don't care about that. Because I know my heart. And, and so he's got preachers scared, don't want to take offerings, shy if they do, head down, don't want the people to think I'm a bad preacher. And then people don't know how to prosper. They don't know how to increase. And then, and then all, all these dreams in our hearts, all these things we feel like God's called us to do, but can't ever put any feet to the ground because we, we don't know how to believe him for money. We don't know how to believe him for provision. We don't know how to sow and reap. We don't know the God that'll cause you to overflow financially. <laughs> Bring your, your, your financial dreams and desires to pass and put you in a position where you can bless and prosper and increase. You ever, you ever gave something to somebody and made them cry? When you do, you'll know the verse that says it's better to give than to receive. <laughs> I gave, this is something just small. I was, I was getting my hair cut one day years ago. And... Uh, I had $20 somebody gave me, and I was going to buy some golf balls with that $20. This was BM. This is before money, before we had any money. We were married, didn't have much. And I was, so I'm going to get, somebody, I think, gave me that $20 after I got done preaching. They wanted to bless me, praise the Lord. And I got a haircut, and the Lord said, I want to give you, her to give you, I want you to give her that $20. And I said, you mean $20 total for the haircut, five for the tip. He said, no. Pay for your haircut and give her the 20 Yes, Lord. And he said, tell her this. And he told me something to tell her. And I, and I gave her the money, and I started to tell her to her. And I started to see her eyes water up, and inside I'm saying, fall, tears, fall, cry. Why? Because she's blessed. Yeah. You know, you just want to be, be a blessing. Yeah. And, and that was $20. You know, you, you can have it in your heart to buy people houses and cars and pay off people's debts. And, and yeah. Psalm 112 is the believer that you and I are supposed to be. The Psalm 112 believer. Wealth and riches are in his house. 
That's a righteous man with, his, with wealth and riches, and his righteousness is still intact. And he's serving the Lord and following the Lord. We don't, most believers don't know life like this. And, and why? Because the enemy's tried to hide this facet of God. Now, this isn't even the facet we're going to talk about in this series, but this just came up here tonight. So you've got to get, and if you don't know God like that, he can't be that to you. And then you miss out on what God has for you. So, so it's very important that you and I know him more and become more acquainted with him. And what that does is he's able to do more things in our life when he reveals more of himself to us. Are you seeing this? And I believe that's what God's wanting to do. I believe that he's wanting to introduce himself to us in a new way so that he can do a new thing in our life. <laughs> And, and what he's going to introduce you and me to in this series is that he's the God of life. Say God of life. And we haven't even got to that part of it just yet, but we will. Um, go with me to Genesis chapter 3. Everybody doing okay so far? What happens is, when I was, when I was growing up, we had some things happen in our family um, that... Uh, Miracles of healing, I, I would call them. Man, look, those things mark you. You never know who your victory is going to leave an impact on. You never know. And um, one of them was my Aunt Dina. I've shared this with you before, but uh, she had a, a daughter that was born with half a heart. And the doctor gave her 10 to 30 days. And I remember being at their house. I think I was nine, nine years old, eight years old maybe. I remember, and we all kneeled by the bed, and we were all praying, and, and we went up to see her. And uh, Dean is going to give the testimony one time, sometime in a service. We'll, we'll make time for that. But long story short, they went back to the doctor months later, and the nurse came in crying. And she, the other half of the heart was there. Didn't have one, and now she has one. Why? That's God the healer. God the healer. Grandpa, it's going to sound like a song. Grandpa got ran over by a tractor. <laughs> a big tractor. And baler behind it. And he's on the hill. And he can't move. And the baler's coming towards him. That baler hits him. He's probably done. Cried out to the Lord. Picked him up. Threw him out of the way. That's God the protector. Those things leave impact in you. Then you go find it in his word. You can't talk me out of that. There's not an experience that I could have or you could have that ever is going to talk me out of. I know my father. He's the healer. Now, I'm, I'm sensitive. I know there's other things that happened in our family. My great grandpa, he, they, he had colon cancer, prayed for him. He went home to be with the Lord. That don't change God. He's God the healer. I don't know what happened in that situation. Grandpa might have got a, a, a peak of the light and said, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm going to blow this popsicle stand. <laughs> There's testimonies of people doing that. You get a glimpse of the other side, and you see this trashy place. We don't have any concept of how dark and ugly it is down here because we've never glanced at perfection. When you see heaven and look back down to earth, this is going to look like the bottom of a toilet compared to what heaven's like. But my point is, when you know him and walk with him, you can't talk me out of who I know he is. An experience can't, why? Because I've walked with him myself. I know what he's told me in his word about himself. And there might be stuff I don't understand or don't all, all in, but that doesn't change what I know. I know my father. He's good. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you and I want to be endeavoring to know him more and more every day because this affects what he can do and be in your life. So I started getting the word when I started getting to know God for myself. Well, I already had foundation of healing in me. But then I started seeing the scriptures. So then, you know, a little, you know, a little sickness or something would try to come on me. And you know what I'd do? Well, I, I know God the healer. I mean, if he, he gave Hannah half a heart, he could take care of this little thing I got. Yeah, yeah. And I knew him as healer. So I go to him as healer and, and time and time again, receive your healing. Receive your finances if you know him on that level. But the enemy will try to keep you from seeing who he really is so that God can't be those things to you in your life. So, so, some people, only, the only thing they know about God, save people. He'll save you from going to hell. There's others that know, know God as the one who will wake you up in the morning and walk with you all day 
and tell you what to do when you get to work and give you wisdom for your job and put some money in your pocket and heal your body and cause you to have great relationships and a great marriage and lead you every step and cause you to pull into the mall when it's packed and pff, there's a parking spot right up front for you. People make fun of us for saying stuff like that. They mock us. Mock on, buddy. You'll be parking in the back. I'll be up front. You know, I mean, they, don't, they just don't think he cares. And then some people, you know, they, they have the right heart and they think, well, you know, I don't want to bother God with that stuff. Listen, c come on, come on, come on. I assure you that you're not going to tax him too much. <laughs> He's well able to take care of the greatest problem on the earth and have you pull into the parking lot right at the right time. He's well able. He knows the hairs on your head. Got them numbered. He's, you're the apple of his eye. He, he's not limited, but there's people that, so there's people that know God like that, that they walk with him every second of the day, talk with him every second of the day. Everything that comes up, they go to him. They look to him. Why? Because they see him as that. So they go to him as that. So other people that see God as just a, Mad old guy with a gray beard ready to judgment, judgment, judge people, judge people, mean, send people to hell. You don't know him. I read a verse this week that, I mean, it, it, it smacked me hard. And it said that God, when he, when, he, when he does deliver out judgment, he does it unwillingly. Unwillingly. It's in Lamentations 3, you can, you can find it. Why? Because that judgment was, is not his will. But there comes a point when it has to be judged to separate the good from the bad. Do you know if God didn't judge, judge evil, do you know that everybody would be in heaven then? And then what would heaven be? It would just look like earth. So the judgment is to separate. We have to separate the good from the evil. And I assure you, He doesn't come to judgment quickly. God is long-suffering and merciful. And if you hit judgment, that means because you said no a long time and hardened yourself a long time, and you got to the place where he knew you're just not going to change. He's not good. He, he's merciful. He's good. He's right, you know. But some people, they talk about God, all they talk about judgment, 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 judgment. You don't know him. He's merciful. He's good. This is the God that you and I serve. Let's read this in Genesis 3, and I think that'll be enough for tonight. And we're going to get to know in this series the God of life. Say it again, God of life. Life is a big word. We've looked at it in, uh, on that Sunday morning. Life is talking about strength and uh, prosperity and success and and increasing in joy and vibrant and strong life. This is the God that you and I serve. Death has to do with decaying and destruction and weakening and lessening and going down. That's not Him. And if things are doing that, it's not by His hand. And it's not what He wanted. He's a God of life. And we'll, we'll look at some of that maybe next time. In Genesis 3, why, why is this about knowing him so important? And, and why, in particular, do we need to get introduced to the God of life? You know, you can be proud sometimes and think, well, you know, I know God really, really well. And there's not too much else I can know about him. And, and there's nothing that I think about him right now that ain't 100% right. Now, there's things right now in your thinking that need to be adjusted where God is concerned. You could have a false perception of Him or an incomplete perception of Him. If you don't think this is a problem, this is the first thing that the enemy did to Adam in the garden. He came to the garden, and what did he say? He said, he said um, Adam said we can't, or uh, Eve, I'm sorry, forgive me. Tripping off. This isn't the first time I preach this. I've read Genesis before. Um, he came and uh, he said to him, he said, you can't eat of all the trees of the garden. And they said, well, we can eat of all the trees of the garden. The woman said, we can eat all the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you can't eat it. Neither shall you touch it. If you do, you're, you're going to die. And this is what the enemy said in verse 4. He said, God knows that in the day you eat thereof, 
He first said, you won't die. And then he said, God knows in the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be opened. You'll be as God's, knowing good and evil. Now, what's the, insinua- what's the insinuating? They say, they, he, she said, we can't eat it because if we do, we die. And he said, you're not going to die. God knows that if you eat it, you're going to know good and evil, and you're going to be like him. And what's the insinuation? He doesn't want that. The insinuation is he's holding out on you. He's holding out on you. And that's why he doesn't want you to eat this, because he's holding out on you. And there's something good that he doesn't want you to have that you're going to get when you eat this. And that's why he doesn't want you to have it. Is this true about God? God gave them everything. (laughs) Everything. He created that garden for them. That place was... That was heaven on earth. Now you go back to what we were talking about in the offering. The tree was that tithe. Don't touch it. Don't eat of it. That's mine. (laughs) Everything else is yours. That's mine. And he's actually got them to think that their creator is holding out on them. He gave them the whole earth. (laughs) Do Do you see what he's doing? trying to get them to believe a lie about who God really is. And they have a false perception. They have a false reality. And they're seeing God now as somebody that's holding on us, somebody that's trying to keep us from something good. God's not trying to keep you and I from anything good. He's trying to get good to you, (laughs) not keep good from you. In fact, God God doesn't tell you not to sin because He doesn't want you to have fun. He tells you not to sin because it'll kill you. And it'll keep you from having real fun. (laughs) Are you seeing this? But he came, and he's always trying to paint a false picture of who God really is in the hearts of God's people. And what do you tell Adam? There's something God doesn't want you to see, something God doesn't want you to be, something God doesn't want you to know. He doesn't want your eyes open. He doesn't want you to be like God's. He doesn't want you to know good and evil. He's holding out on you. And they bought it, didn't they? And the enemy will try to cast aspersions on the Father. And it's imperative that you and I are rooted in Him. So that when the enemy comes to try to lie about God, you don't buy the lie. That's not my Father. No, that's not Him. I know Him. I would walk with Him. I know Him. Now now listen, I need to say this too, because there are people that think they know God and don't read the Bible. You don't know Him. You don't know Him. This is the only way to know Him. By this, through His Spirit. Well, I just don't think God would mind me too much, you know, whatever. You know, um, I, you know, things like, I just don't think God don't mind me too much not really going to church. I don't really have a church I go to. He doesn't really care. He just, it's just personal with me and Him. Where's the, where are those verses? A lot of people talk, well, my, my faith is private between me and Him. All the verses I read about you and me being witnesses. <laughs> witnessing to what? To the good things your good God has done in your life. Well, a witness ain't being private. <laughs> Are you seeing this? Now, I'm not making fun of people. People don't know. People don't understand. But where do you get ideas like that? You don't get them from here because you don't find them in here. The only way they get you, that you get to know your Father is through His Word. And you get rid of those silly ideas. And you need to ask yourself, you know, you need to be asking yourself all the time, where's the Scripture? If that's what I think about the Lord, if that's what I believe in, where is the Scripture or where are the Scriptures? And so just, because this is what a lot of people like to do. They like to create a God they like and one that's comfortable to live with. Did you hear me? He don't really care about that. He doesn't really care about, are you sure he doesn't care? Oh, God don't care what I do with my money. Are you sure? Because Jesus said the only way to know if we're going to put true riches in your hand is to watch what you do with your money. Looks to me like God cares. They brought an old shoddy offering in Malachi chapter 1, and God wasn't happy about it. Looks like He cares about offerings. (laughs) Oh, we're kind of just casual. You know, we're just laid back. Me and God, you know, we're just cool. He don't really care 
I'm a little late, a little sloppy. He, it don't matter to him. Really? If that's what you believe, where are the verses? Oh, he looks on the heart. I know in your sloppiness, in your walk with him, is a reflection of what's in your heart. We should honor the Lord. What did he say to so those that honor me? I, oh, that ain't, that's not grace. That's not grace. I know, but it's the Bible. And it is grace. <laughs> More grace than you realize. People think, well, you can, I can just do what I want, and, and God just leave me alone, and when I want something, I'll come and ask, and he'll give it to me. Sorry. No. <laughs> this is a walk with him. Where do people come up with ideas like this? They don't read. They just come up with what they, and, and listen, get to know God for yourself. Get in that book for yourself. Discover him for yourself. And challenge yourself. If you think things about God, then go prove yourself right by finding the verses. And you'll be shocked at the time you won't be able to find any verses. And actually find verses that support the opposite of what you're thinking. And that's the other thing we need to be praying for in this series as we're closing tonight. Any idea or thought that you and I have about him in our heart that is not right, Come on, how many of you would say, I want to see it? I, I want to see it. I, I don't want to think something about him that's not true. I don't want to come up with an idea about him on my own. I want to know who he really is and what he's really like. Yeah, I want to know him. And, uh, you know, people completely ignore verses how Jesus came into the temple one day and wasn't real happy and started turning over tables. And he rebuked the disciples. You know what rebuke means? Corrected them sternly. <laughs> That's your master. Yeah, and he's also, and people get in that ditch, and then they're mad all the time and want to correct people all the time. Yeah, and he's also the God of love and mercy. But you want to get to know him for yourself through his word. That way when the enemy tries to come and get you to take the bait, and you listen, you and I are closer to this than, than you think. And what I mean by that is don't, don't be so proud that you think, oh, I would never take the bait. I, I know so much. I'm so smart. I know. You've got to be on guard against this. God, listen now, He's good. He's good. And believers all over the, the, the earth are attributing bad things to Him. He's good. And He's a God of life. And He loves you. And He's for you. And if it's bad and if it's evil, it didn't come of him. It did not come of somebody said, I don't understand that. He's good. What scripture we'll look at next week that says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. There's no trace of darkness or death or evil in him. Well, where does the evil fruit come from? It comes from the evil tree. So if I don't have any evil in me, I can't produce any evil out of me. Well, how much evil does God have in him? So how much can he produce? <laughs> can't produce it. He's all good. You'll see it as we go. Stand on your feet with me. Let's, let's pray over this tonight and release our faith that we would know him more. And in particular, we'll get into that next week, know him as the God of life. God of life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Just bow your heads, everybody's eyes closed. Let's just pray and release our faith for a moment here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know many people in the building watching online, I know your heart's saying yes to this. I want to know God for myself. And even if I have known Him and walked with Him for many years, I want to know Him more. I want, to, I want more intimacy with Him, more fellowship with Him. I want to walk and talk with Him like he's my best friend because he is he is and I don't want to have any perception of him that is not the reality of him and each one of us and you just agree with me as we're praying Lord we open our hearts to you and we ask you anything in us about you, any belief, any thought, any perception that we have on the inside of us that is not the reality of who you are. 
Lord, we ask you to uproot it with your word and by your spirit. Run it off. Get it out. We'll humble ourselves. If it's something we've thought and believed for 10, 20 years, if it's not you, we don't want to believe it to be true about you. We want to know you for who you really are and let you be the good God that you are. And we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you that that would come to us through your word, that, that would come to us by your spirit, that in this, in this series, in this teaching that you're having us start, in this journey that we're on, that we would get introduced to the God of life. And we thank you for it tonight. We thank you for course adjustments in our heart. We thank you for corrections. We thank you for minor adjustments. There's some people, I don't know if they're in the building, there's some people that will listen to this series that there's major adjustments that need to be made on the inside of you about your good God. Perceptions that religion has put into you, perceptions that the enemy that has put into you that just aren't true about your father. And God wants to uproot those things and get those things out of you. And He's desiring to walk with you closer than you've ever walked with Him. Reveal Himself to you in ways that you've never seen Him. Talk with you and fellowship with you and enter a place of intimacy with you that is beyond anything you've ever dreamed. Father, we do thank You for it tonight. We humble ourselves. We don't know you in full. We don't know you and all there is to know about you. We don't. We don't. We don't. And we're hungry. We're hungry for more. For more. We've tasted and we've seen the goodness of the Lord. And what we've tasted and what we saw, we said, oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. And now we're saying, we want some more. We want some more. We want to see more. We want to know more. We want to know you more. And we believe we receive tonight when we pray. And we do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. And we just want to take a second to dismiss all of you watching online tonight. Thanks again so much for joining us. Don't forget you can go back to mam.tv. And right there on the website, you can access all of our free resources. Send in a prayer request if you're, if you're struggling or going through something in your life. We want to pray with you and believe God with you. Don't forget to join us next week, 7.15. We'll see you next time.